It's very easy for coaches like me to say that solo practice routine is one of the best things that you can do to improve your game. But if you don't know what you're doing, you could be wasting your time. So in this video, I'm going to give you my second solo routine practice that will help you with three things. Number one, it will help you with your service returns. Number two, it will help you develop an understanding of the height of the front wall. And number three, it will improve your short swing technique, which I'll talk about later. Hello everybody, I'm Philip, an ex-professional squash coach. I try to make videos that you can't easily find on YouTube that explain the how, the what and the why. Hopefully I'm helping you improve one video at a time. The prerequisite for this video is the ability to hit the ball off the back wall quite consistently and also having watched, understood and practiced my side to side video which is up here. It's important because it's one of the core blocks of my training routine. You intermittently change between different ideas. Because of sound problems in the past, what's going to happen is I'm going to do a little bit more explaining and then we're going to switch views where you see me hitting the ball but I'll be overdubbing the description and the commentary. So before we start, here are five solo practice principles that I'd like you to adopt and think about. Number one, change your approach to solo practice. It is not something that you simply do because your partner's late or cancelled. It is part of a routine and process that helps you improve. In fact, I believe it's one of the most important things. And you've got to change your chip in the mind to say this is important and I'm going to make time to do it. Number two, don't go on court without knowing exactly what you're going to do. Don't just hit the ball up and down the wall and get bored after five minutes. Have a plan, and it doesn't matter whether it's one of my plans or some other coach's plans. Have a plan. Number three, know exactly what you're trying to do with each shot. If, for example, the idea is to hit the ball up and down the wall, well, be more specific than that. Hit the ball up and down the wall no wider than the service box, or even less, and make it come off the back wall every single time. Make sure you know exactly what you're trying to do with the ball, because if you do, you're more likely to do it. Number four is do what you need to do not what you like to do. Now that's a very important principle because we all enjoy doing the things that we're good at, but solo practice should be about doing the things that you are not good at, things that need improving. And number five, take it seriously. Pressure yourself in some way. Sometimes you can do a routine where you have to hit 40 or 50 or 20, depending on your standard, shots with no mistakes. If you make a mistake, you go back to zero. You can't be hitting the ball on your own and not take it seriously. It won't have the added benefit of improving your mentality, improving your concentration. Before I go any further, I want to mention something I forgot to talk about in the intro, and that's that this solo practice routine is available as a poster. The links for a black and white and color version are in the video description. You can download it and they can be printed and kept in your bag or even put on the, your club notice board. They're very high resolution, so they should be able to be printed up to A3 size. Before you even hit the ball, you should be hot. And when I say hot, I mean sweating. You should warm the ball up separately before you start any of the routines, which we'll talk about in a moment. But I want to remind you that you are not doing these solo routines to get warm. You are getting hot to do these solo routines. Let's use the poster to explain the overview. I've already discussed the solo practice principles, but I'll be doing that in each and every solo practice routine video. The routine itself is called the double cross. As you can see from the image, it's two crosses. I've already discussed the benefits, and I've mentioned the prerequisite, which is the side to side video, and the link for that can be found in the text description. The target audience is club player standard. What I haven't mentioned is how long it will take you. And as you can see, that's 12 minutes. That's 12 minutes per side. Now let's look at a little bit more detail of the actual routine. You can see here that I've split it into what I'm calling mega sets. A mega set is one side or one type of area that you work on. 
you can see here, as I mentioned in the intro, that you'll be doing one minute of side to side and then an exercise, another minute of side to side and an exercise, another minute of side to side and so on. Now in this case, the Mega Set 2 is the opposite side. In other routines it might be different, but in this one you only work on the forehand or backhand first and then you swap to the other side and that is the Mega Set 2. Nobody likes the idea of wasting their time and we all want to get as much benefit as possible in the shortest possible time. You do not want to do one exercise for too long. It's bad for your concentration and focus and it's bad for your skill acquisition. You'll get more benefit from alternating between different exercises than you would do if you did one exercise for the same amount of time. Think of it as the solo practice version of the high intensity interval training, HIT as it's commonly known. You can work really hard on one aspect of your game and then move on to another part and come back to the original part. The side to side exercise allows you to improve your concentration, improve your technique and get fitter at the same time. If the ball isn't warm, you can start off by doing 100 of these instead of 50. See how many consecutive shots you can do within the service box width within your one minute. The views that you see here and on the backhand are not synchronized because I only have one camera. So this is the first shot, the straight drive up and down the wall. You've probably done thousands already. You'll notice that on the forehand side, I use a target and I will be making a video about targets in the future. What I want you to do for this exercise though, is try to find a rhythm, a rhythm that works for you. Hit the ball at the same speed, hit the ball at the same height on the front wall and try to make the ball come off the back wall. If you can keep your shots within one service box width, fantastic. If you feel more confident than that, reduce the size to maybe half the service box width. And don't forget to watch the ball hit your strings. Okay, so we're back to the side to side for set two. This time, I want you to hit the ball at 90% your maximum. Come on, hit it! Time for shot two, straight high volleys from around the service line. Remember, the two images are not synchronized. What I'm looking to do here is I'm looking to keep my swing quite short, but very controlled. I'm looking to make contact with the ball above my head. Now, you'll notice that I don't always do that. So don't worry if you can't keep the ball that high, just keep practicing. What you'll also notice is that the higher I make contact with the ball, the further back the contact point. That's because when the ball is lower, I can make contact earlier, but when it's higher, I can't. So if that happens to you, don't worry. Just like the straight drives, try to get a rhythm of the right speed and try to hit the ball high on the front wall. This is more about control than it is power. Side to side, set three. This time, I want you to go back to your concentration and accuracy mode. In the first set, you did as many consecutive shots within the service box as you could. This time, I want you to beat that number. On to shot three. This is the low counter tight shot. What you'll notice first of all is that I keep swapping my feet. Don't become too accustomed to only using one particular foot. The second thing you'll notice is that because I'm an old man, I can't get very low, but you can get lower. The third thing I want you to notice is my opposite hand, the non-hitting hand. See how much it moves to counterbalance myself. Number four, I want you to notice how little wrist I use. It's all in the arm or the shoulder. I am just blocking the shot. My job here is to take somebody's short shot and counter it with another tight short shot. I probably can't hit a straight drive. I'm not gonna be able to hit a great cross court, so I'm going to counter with a simple, tight short shot.
time for set four of the side to side. We're back to our power mode now. Previous one was 90, this one is 95. 95%, come on! Shot four, straight high service returns from the back of the court. Quite possibly the hardest shot in the group. Quite possibly the most important shot in the group. I don't do a great job of demonstrating it here, but on some of the shots you can see that I do keep my racket quite high, I keep my elbow quite high, and I'm blocking. I'm not trying to smash this ball, I'm trying to hit it down the wall, high on the front wall, and keep it tight. I'm trying to make life difficult for my opponent once he has a good serve. Don't worry if you make a mistake, it's going to happen. Just pick up the ball and keep going for your minute. Try to get into a rhythm just like the other shots. Don't get too close to the wall and make sure that when you finish swinging, your racket finishes high. Side to side, set five. You've got two previous scores of highest consecutive number of shots. You must do your best to beat it this time. Keep the ball within the service box width. Side to side, set six. It's the final power mode. I'm looking for between 85 and 95% of your maximum. Come on, last one. Here we go, shot six. Strange thing about this is that you will never play in a real game, but that's true of some other practices like the figure of eight, for example. The point is that it focuses on really keeping your racket high and controlling the ball with a very solid wrist and a very short swing. Adjust the angle of the racket face to keep the ball high. Don't get too close to the side wall and definitely don't try and hit the ball too hard. If you need to, stand further away from the side wall. It's all about controlling the height of the ball, not controlling the width away from the side wall. Keep your arm high, keep the racket high, and keep your wrist firm. Well done for finishing this exercise. For this particular routine, I've told you that I wanted you to do one minute on each exercise, and how you time that is up to you. There are lots of free, really good apps for your smartphone. You could have a clock on the wall, or you could use a sports timer on the wrist. Choice is yours. One progression is instead of using time, you use the number of shots, and you have to decide how many is a good number for you. My recommendation would be that you time for one minute and you count how many shots you can do and then you'll know for each exercise roughly what you should be doing. If you wanted to take it a stage further you could say the number of shots with no mistakes. That really begins to put pressure on you but it definitely extends the amount of time that you need for this exercise. I've given you a set order for doing each of the exercises and yes you could change those and you could vary them but it's my experience that the combination of low, high, low, 
and then high, low, high is the best one. You could, if you wanted to, do one shot on the forehand, side to side, the same shot on the backhand. But that means that you're doubling your uh, routine to 24 minutes. And if you have the time, that's good. But again, I still recommend staying on one side, finishing the routine, either taking a very short break, quick sip of water or something, and then switching sides, or just go straight across to the other side. That definitely improves the intensity. One final thought about variations and progressions. I would do this routine at least three, maybe four times before you think about making it harder or changing it. Get yourself into a routine so that you really understand what you're doing in each shot before you think about changing it. That was routine number two. I hope that it was useful for you. If it was, tell me in the comments what you enjoyed most. Give me some feedback on how it worked for you. If it wasn't useful or you didn't enjoy it, also tell me in the comments, tell me what you didn't like so I can improve my videos. Now here's a quick tip for you. Most of us have three or four different speeds that we hit the ball. When we hit the ball up and down the wall, when we kill the ball, when we boast it, and when we drop it. You should try to develop a lot more speed range. Don't hit the ball at the same speed all of the time, especially when you're hitting it down the wall. Try to change the speed because that can break somebody's rhythm. You've probably found situations where the first time you played somebody who hit the ball really hard, it took a little while to adapt, but then you did. And that's the same kind of idea, but extended. Change the speed to see if you can break your opponent's rhythm. So. This is a subscription button if you decide that you want to subscribe to my channel. If you do, be sure to turn on notifications so you get told when I release new videos. This is a playlist of five things, a collection of five ideas that might make you think in different ways. And this is a video that YouTube thinks is a good fit for you based on what you've been watching. And remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.